What's up everyone and welcome to an episode where I paint a Slimer model. Yep, we're using Express Color again, that's Orc Skin and Play Green. And we're going to go through this a little quicker. But um, this isn't really a paint tutorial, I'm just kind of experimenting. This is two experiments actually. I want to see how well the Express Color medium works with other types of paint. Uh, in this case, I'm using it with um, some Vallejo game color, and I'm, gonna, and I'm going to be using it with um, some standard Vallejo color. And I'm going to be mixing it one to one, so one part paint, one one part medium mixture. Um, I've also read that you can use this medium to mix all sorts of pigment types to make your own paint. So there's a lot more uses for this particular stuff. Now as you can see the express color goes on nice. Now this is just the express color. This is orc skin I'm using for the majority of Slimer's body. And I'm just liberally kind of brushing it on using the flat edge of my primer brush actually because I wanted a nice wide stroke. I wanted him to look slimy so I kind of wanted to look uneven and not necessarily streaky, but I want to see the lines. I want to see some definition of color difference and graduation. I will say for sure that working with the Express Color Line has definitely taught me that I don't need to thin this stuff. There's no need for water. Uh, unless you're putting it through an airbrush, in which case I would highly recommend using an airbrush thinner. Uh, pretty sure any will do. I haven't really confirmed that 100% yet, but um, uh, we're going to do some airbrushing experimentation soon, so we'll, we'll let you know how it works out. But I imagine uh, water would work to thin it, or I imagine some airbrush thinner would work to thin it. I have not needed to add anything. This stuff goes on smooth, very smooth. It really is a one-coat paint. Uh, it really does work very much like a contrast paint should. Um, it's a lot cheaper than some other guys' paints. <laughs> and it does a really nice job. The end result looks really good. And if you go over and you add a couple touch-ups and highlights and maybe a few additional coats, you'll get an even more refined look. Now that's I didn't do that for this particular example. This was just a quick experiment and I think I actually he came out way better than I intended. So this video is kind of like a you know, kind of an example of what you can do. I mean, this is a pretty big fig. This is not a small one. This is not a miniature per se. Um decent scale. And here I am using Express Paint. Now, I would never try this with Speed Painter. Uh, speed paint from Army Painter. I, I don't think I'd try this with Games Workshop uh, contrast paints either. Because I don't think they would coat well. I think I'd wind up with a lot more brush strokes being visible. I don't know if they... I don't know. I, you know, I, I never experimented with it, but I wouldn't try that. This, For some reason, when I played around with this the first time, I said, you know what? This goes on so much like just normal paint that's been super thinned out. I bet you you could do just about anything with this, and I'm imagining you could probably use this on bigger figures too. Um, <clears throat> now, we're going to try this with various skin tones uh, in the future. I'm going to try blending the medium with various skin tones that I have, and I'm going to keep trying it with various colors, you know, just to see how uh, how that works out. But I'm going to let you go ahead and watch the rest of this painting exercise. Um, really, this was just kind of fun for me, uh, playing with the colors. And uh, if anything interesting pops up with any technique I'm doing here, I will mention it as I go ahead and do it. Oh, and I never mentioned the second part of the experiment was essentially seeing if this paint has any sort of reactivation or whether or not I'm going to have issues using tones over uh, the paint that I apply and whether that's going to make the paint run. So this was actually a couple part of experiment, but anyway, I forgot to mention that.
Here, if you'll notice, this is where the plague green comes into play. I am applying some of the plague green onto his lower... I'm not, that's not even really part of him. This is kind of like a splooch that he kind of comes out of, I guess. Um, really, it's just necessary to make it so he has something to stand on. You know, otherwise, um, you just stick a pole in his, in his bottom, I guess, if you were going to do it any other way. Really, what the plague green does is it kind of gives a shadow to the bottom side of that color. So it differentiates between the top and the bottom so you have some sort of a graduation of color. What I have found that works really nicely is that cooperative tones will cover each other really well. A lighter tone going on underneath and then a darker tone going over the top of it will lend shadows. Um, whereas a lighter color going over the top of it will sometimes lend a highlight if it's able to cover it doesn't always happen because the colors do tend to have a high saturation so they don't um, they don't like to be painted over once you get a color on something you better hope that something that's going over it is either going to be in that tone range or brighter or darker um, because much like any other contrast type of paint or speed paint they do kind of go on and stay on although unlike speed paints these do not seem to have any reactivation I have tested multiple multiple scenarios where the paints will have come into contact with each other and I am not getting any level of reactivation at all. What you will notice is however there's like almost like a repellent nature to the coat that's dried underneath whereas it's almost trying to prevent the coat above from drying onto it. Um, it's not a sealer per se but I'm guessing there's some sort of like a top coat effect going on in the uh, medium that's actually making that happen. This is actually an interesting quality and allows you to clean up mistakes easier if you make them.
Here I'm just adding a little more touch-up, um, extra coats around the face area, just some more detail lines, trying to sink in some of that darker green into some of the chin lines and stuff like that, while still maintaining the shiny nature, so that way he still kind of looks like a slime. All right, here we're going to be using Bone White, an express medium, to paint the teeth. And this is going to apply just a nice light kind of white overtone, like a bone color, over the teeth. Now, as you'd imagine, this really isn't going to be that very, you know, much visible. But I'm also going to try and hit, like, the inner portion of the lip there, just where the lip kind of, like, sticks out a little bit on the top and on the bottom to give it a little bit of a shine where the little cracks in the lip would be. And it's like this nice kind of off-whitish color anyway. So when it dries, you're not going to really see it too much. And it's going to give it a nice little highlight right there at the edge of the inside of the mouth. All right, now we're going to be using Imperial Yellow. This is another Express color. I'm just going to use this straight out of the bottle. This is going to be for the eyes. On my last Slimer, I painted the eyes red, and that was a private uh, request. Um, Slimer's eyes are commonly yellow. I um, believe they could be red, I guess, if he was angry or hungry. But uh, in this particular instance, we're going to just do them yellow. So Imperial Yellow is a pretty much direct match. I like the color. It works. Uh, just take out my smallest brush I have here, and I'm just going to dab it right into the eyeballs. And it doesn't really matter if you overlap this over this green, because the Orc Skin Green has some yellow in it. And so if they do kind of touch on the edges, you're going to just get a blend. And it's really not going to look that unnatural, to be honest. So again, don't always worry about paints touching in the corners. As long as you're working within tones, I think you're okay. For this, we're using Stonewall Gray, and this is going to be for the base. We're going to start by dry brushing that around the edges just to kind of cover the edge. I've already kind of filled in some of the cracks, incidentally, while doing some of the priming work. So I'm going to have to kind of fix that anyway. But I have all intentions of using a dark wash on the bottom to kind of give it a dirtier look when I'm done with the whole thing. Um, the dry brushing usually just goes around the edges, and I do it to try to avoid filling in any more of the cracks as possible with any more paint. Uh, and then once I get a good deal of the outside filled in with the dry brushing, I'll go ahead and take a primer brush with a mixture of the Stonewall Gray, which is a game color from Vallejo. I'll mix that with the Express Medium one-to-one, -one, and then I will apply that with a small primer brush using the side of the brush, just kind of putting those in, putting that in the areas where I want to uh, touch in that color. Now, as you can see with the fill-in on the uh, ground area, I'm not trying to be perfect because pavement, ground, rock, nothing is actually perfect organically. So. You want to try to make it look kind of sporadic in places. You want to make it almost chaotic and haptic. Uh, and that's kind of why I don't really care so much what the top surface is going to look like while I'm working on this. What's going to happen is, is once this is done, I'm going to go over this with a darker tone wash that's going to fill out those cracks and it's going to make all of this look really old. Because right now it kind of looks like freshly painted stone which is not what we're going for. It's almost got like a pinkish white color to it, um, which is fine because we want to be able to take this and make it look dirty and old. And you'll see how we get there once we start applying all the other um, stuff as well. Because once we apply the base coats and then the tones, then we also apply terrain materials, which then we have to make it look a little dirtier and aged as well. Obviously, don't want anything looking like it's going to be out of place.
This is an Army Painter Dark Tone. Uh, I believe this is called a Quick Shade. Uh, I love these. These are great. They're washes, essentially, or glazes. I guess wash is more the correct term. Uh, other companies make washes, too, but Army Painter, this line, I just bought the whole set. Um, I love them. They're great. They work wonderful. Uh, they do a really quick job of making things look dirty or grimy or having a particular color tone. Because, for example, you can paint something metallic and then you can coat it with like a green tone or a blue tone to make it to have look more of a cobalty feel or, uh, you know, different types of metallics. But what it's going to do for us here on the pavement area or the stone is it's going to make it look old. And it's going to make it look like it belongs rather than this perfectly clean chunk of stone that's underneath Slimer, which doesn't make any sense. Even if he was standing on the sidewalk in New York, it would not be perfectly clean and shiny. Um, but like I said, I'm imagining him somewhere in a dungeon in Dungeons and Dragons, so... I don't think he's uh, in New York City right now. He's roaming the dungeons looking for adventurers because they might have food. And uh, I think he's willing to slime anyone. So, you know, we'll see what goes on there. <laughs> now, don't be afraid to get the dark tone on other parts of the object as well. Like if you want to, you know, get it on the, on the actual character and see what effect that has. I've actually used dark tone over white. It'll make uh, that look grimy. Um, you can use brown tones over white. That'll make that look really grimy or like really nasty grimy. So it, it really all depends, you know. If you're looking for dirty and uh, very like beat up look like, you know, Warhammer stuff tends to. Um, the shade stuff is great for that. It gives a very quick um, effect that makes it look, I mean, the difference is great. Like when you see the, how it... And then the naturalness of just kind of how the, the pigment falls over the tint. It's just like, wow, it's amazing. Um, when we're done with all that, we're going to go ahead and apply black around the rim of the base. And this is just a flat black with a little bit of water mixed in just to thin it out. And then we'll go ahead and apply that. And once that's done, we will put on the final bits, which is all the base topper stuff, like your rocks and shrubs and things like that. And I'll show you. Um, how I'm going to lay that out. All right, so, so we have some little rocks and we have a bits of like, I guess I'm going to just call them tiny little bits of grass. Because that's what they look like. They look like grass. Um, we're going to put some of the rocks around each part and then I'm going to have bits of this grass kind of wrapped around it. 
and then I'm going to have a bit of the kind of fake tufts kind of coming around out of that. But I want it to look like it belongs. I don't want it to look really super out of place. And sometimes when you place this stuff, it just looks bad. So I'm going to try and be really cautious about making it look like it belongs. And again, I give these rocks a dark tone, quick shade wash uh, to make them look like they belong. Because I, you know, who, who's going to find shiny white rocks just laying around on a dungeon floor, right? It's not going to happen. Even if you were out in like a field and this is, you know, maybe like a temple or something. Uh, no, those rocks aren't going to be shiny and fancy and white. Not going to happen. So yeah, got to give them a little bit of a wash. Got to give them a little bit of color. Make sure that they. They do look like they belong, uh, and this does a very quick job of that. And that is it, folks. That is the final piece. That's what he turned out like. I'm actually pretty pleased with that, not considering that this took about an hour. Anyway, let us know if you, what you thought about this episode. Um, if you want more like it, hit the subscribe, like, and don't forget to ring that bell. See you all soon.